Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part 7 on the Mark 1 GT Ford Cortina respray. The previous videos have gone right through the repair stage, primer, prep work and everything leading up to getting the clear coat on. This video is going to be dedicated just to doing the two coats of clear coat. We're going to be using the Concept HS clear coat. I ended up only putting 10% reducer in this clear coat. Main reason was that the owner actually specifically said, is this going to look like the paint job of the era? And I said, well, no, not really, but I said, well, I can do my best to make it look a bit more like the original finishes by making it a little bit more orange peely. And that's what he wanted, so that's what he got. So if I had have been going for a dead flat show car type finish, I may have put up to 15% reducer in it and that would have helped it flow out a little bit especially being that it's a high solids clear coat. I've actually recently just had a good friend of mine over in Regina, Saskatchewan. I've made a mention to him before in a video. His name's Dave Paisley, long time viewer of mine right from the start and has actually became a friend of mine. Um, he asked me recently, what is the difference in between high solids, medium solids, low solids, and low VOC clear coats and 2K top coats? It's pretty simple, really. It's just to do with the solids content. Why have they made them like that? There's a couple of reasons. The overall quality of the finish and the durability will be better with the higher solids, and also the environment. So the less evaporation of solvents in your clear coat, it's not as bad for the environment because the chemical reaction of hardener in the 2K clear is not what damages the environment. It's all of those gases or solvents releasing into the environment, which is actually what damages the environment. There's a common thing said by painters, well, I don't see the use in water base because you're still putting 2K clear over it. 2K clear is not as bad for the environment as the solvent based base coats which in many ways is very similar to the old acrylic paint and it dries through evaporation of solvents which is exactly what happened in the old acrylic paints so you just fill them up with thinners the thinners would evaporate and the paint would dry whereas with the two pack paints it's the hardener as I mentioned before reacting with the clear coat that will make it dry so your water-based base coats, they do have a little bit of solvent in them still, but most of it is water. So the evaporation of that water obviously isn't as bad for the environment as all those solvents releasing. But back to the high solids and medium solids, I do highly recommend using a high solid clear if possible. You will get more film build with it and use a lot less paint. Medium solids may be a little bit easier to use, but the way I say it, all you need to do is put a touch more reducer into your high solids clear. You've ended up making it go further that way, and you've basically turned it into a medium solids anyway. There is an extremely efficient method of using high solids clear to replicate just about any single finish, where you will use 130 mils on average per panel, maybe around 300 per uh, roof, bonnet, or boot. But I used to use this method when I was working at a prestige collision repair shop in Melbourne and I really struggled with it before I had a couple of guys come out. I have made a mention to this in a couple of videos before but um, all you do with the Glazeritz high solid 255 clear coat you would go 10% reducer, I'd mix it all up on the scales and just about every single job, I mean like every single job I would be left over with two drops of paint because I had this uh, technique down pat I was in the booth for minimal amounts of time. It was just one really quick coat, so like a 30% coat, just so that it's just covered up over your base coat, and then literally straight away, no flush off time, you go and put your 70% coat on, and you would have the film build of two coats of medium solids clear, if not even more. Spending less time in the spray booth obviously leaves you with a cleaner job too, and in a shop where time is money, every minute counts and if you've got four or five cars to pump through one spray booth a day every 10 minutes every five minutes does make a difference so faster application times means a big difference at the end of the day hope you guys understood what i was saying there a lot of the more experienced guys will probably know exactly what i mean but for the rest of yous feel free to ask questions i always do do my best to get back to them and any more longer questions that i may not have the time to sit down for half an hour and type out i may get back to in another video in a longer video say like this so i'll just give you guys a run through the gun settings that i was using here four turns out on the fluid full fan at 22 psi for clear coat so it's fairly simple settings look i believe this gun basically is the gti pro so the original gti pro 
They've made a no frills version of it. I reckon they've used the exact same molds. They've used 99% of the exact same parts. They've basically given it to you in the box without some of the frills that they used to, like the gun spanner and a cleaning brush and stuff like that. But they have dropped the price dramatically. You can get one of these things for $300 US shipped to your home. That's through Spray Guns Direct, which is where I got mine from. You'll pay a touch more in Australia, but that's mainly just to do with a uh, bit of an average exchange rate at the moment, but an Aussie can expect to get one of these for around $300 you would then have to purchase the 1.6 and 1.8 separately if you did want multiple fluid tips on it. However, you could just get the one fluid tip and then you just have to pay your $40 delivery. And mine was at my door within three days. A few people have been asking, oh, which one should I get? You know, you've just been using the SGK in all your videos recently, but now you've got rid of that which because I just sold it and you're using the GPI. Does that mean that the SGK is not good anymore? No, of course it doesn't. I've just moved on to another gun. I am the gun man, I have to continue moving on and getting new guns so that you guys get the idea of which are the best new guns on the market. But I do believe this gun is a little bit more versatile, it is a little bit more expensive. So basically for someone who's just had enough of the cheap old spray guns that they've been using and just doing their best to get their half decent results with at home, maybe get the SGK, this may not be exactly what you need. But for, say, an apprentice or something who wants one gun to do it all, or even a DIY guy who wants one gun to do it all. So yeah, this is around, say, $300 US shipped to your door. Um, this gun would prime acrylic paint and two-pack paint as well with all those three different uh, tips that you can get with it. Whereas I do know that you can actually get the SGK or FLG5 in a 2mm setup or 1.8mm setup as well. I'm not sure if you can just buy the fluid needle and fluid tip as a extra and you can just interchange them like you can this or whether or not you actually have to get two separate guns which is what I believe the setup is for the FLG5 or SGK because when I've had a look on the website it says that you've got the choice of either buying the 1.8 or 1.4 it doesn't say you can buy them both with the same gun whereas with this one you can get all three with that same gun and just swap them out as you will uh, yeah, obviously you guys have probably noticed something a little bit different. You've got two points of view in this video. Um, I can't say it's something that I'll be doing very often. I just have wanted to do this for a while. Like, I had this idea not long after I even started making videos on this YouTube channel. And, um, yeah, it takes a little bit more resources out of my computer and it's jumping around in my video editor, so I've got to close every other single app at the same time and it's a little bit tricky to get them 100% synchronized but um, I think this first coat isn't quite 100% I think I'll get the second coat of clear coat up in a minute and I think I've got that a lot better so hang around for that and tell us what you think uh, yeah feedback's always welcome but it's probably not really that big of a deal because I'm not going to be doing this very often I don't even know if I'll ever do it again to be honest So that's our first coat of clear down. It's gone down really nice. Bloody hell, I'll tell you what, this gun is an absolute weapon. Um, so gun settings had that four turns out with the fluid, full fan, and I was running it about 22, 23 PSI, so about one and a half bar. And um, it lays it on real nice. Gets a nice amount of paint out, because it's a 1.4. And uh, yeah, real happy with how it's looking. I'm gonna give this maybe about 10 minutes and let it flash right off so that, that second coat um, will go go on over the top of it so it's not going to sort of want to melt in like if I was to go straight over that now um, that first coat and the, like the second coat would sort of melt into that first coat whereas I really want it to sit up on top of it um, and doing that a few of these uh, smaller bits of dust that I've got in this first coat will actually get filled up um, I was, I saw this happen down the back here. You see we've got like this sort of uh, overspray um, and it's turned into loads of bits of crap. But all that is, that's just all your overspray from the roof, it's hitting here. It's not that I've done anything wrong as such, but um, yeah, maybe I should have gone and gone over that bit after I did the roof, which is how I did it on this side. And it doesn't seem quite so bad. So I'll know that for my second coat, but um, yeah, when I knew that from when I was priming it. This, this, basically the same thing happened when I was priming it. Um, 
if it was possible I was thinking maybe I could just do the roof we haven't really got anywhere to mask off like um, that's one uh, there's no masking lot like it no edge I could mask off um, I just noticed here this is a spot that I missed so I'll just go and puff a bit of clear over here being it's my first coat not gonna be a big deal um, a bit of overspray landing here dry patch be able to pick that up in our second coat we've got a few bit a few more bits of shit over this side than what I would have liked but Hey, that's painting for you, isn't it? Nothing that won't polish out, that's the main thing. Haven't seen any, run, any runs yet. And um, yeah, it's looking like pretty nice and straight. I mean, you know, it's not ripple free. There's a few ripples in it, but um, yeah, considering the condition it was in when it came in, I'm, uh, it's definitely looking quite nice. I've basically done this entire job myself from remove and refit, repair, prime, prep and paint the entire job from start to finish and this will be the last gunman job in Australia I think there's a couple little jobs I've got to finish off but this will be the uh, last sort of big full respray um, I've got a couple of VLs out there which I've still got a bit of polishing off but um yeah I'm sure Adam and his dad will be real happy with it um, Adam's basically doing this up for his dad because they used to go and watch it uh, racing around here at Perth so he bought it and he's decided to give it to his old man so good on him so as I said I just gave it 10 minutes came back in and ready to put the second coat of clear on I'm actually starting to run out of stuff to say on this project it's been a very big week it's taken quite a long time to edit this entire video set up I've been pretty happy with how it's come up. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. However, for a couple of minutes, I'm gonna put some music on. If you don't like my music selection, you've got the choice of either turning the volume down, putting something else on in the background, or just skip up to the 25 minute mark, which is where I will continue taking you through the rest of the project and finishing this video off.
this thing here, I don't even know what it is. Like, well, it's water, but I don't know where the hell it came from. Like, it's pretty warm and sweaty day. I'm wondering if it actually just dropped out the back of my um, glove or something. It's something that doesn't usually happen to me. So, I mean, if it was off the ground here, I would have expected it, you'd see like, you know, a spray, but it's like straight down just in this one spot. No big deal. Um, it is in the second coat. I might even be lucky and be able to sand it out in the clear coat. But worst comes to worst, I'll just do a bit of a spot repair and a flick in, and that'll be fine. Um, yeah, being where it is, I'm not um, overly heartbroken. If it was right in the middle of my roof, I would be pretty pissed off, but um, yeah, it's in a pretty good spot. But it's pretty nice and straight, like nothing that stands out as far as ripples go. Like there's a few little minor ripples, but it's, um, yeah, it's fairly straight and it's gonna look real cool when it's back together. This car's really grown on me. Um, a few of these bigger bits of dust, they didn't quite fill up in that clear coat, but they'll sand out and polish up. Being it's a HS clear, it should hold a nice gloss. Um, some of the MS clears, like you can have them look real nice off the gun and then you come in the next day or um, even sometimes two or three days after once it cures, um, it'll sort of start to die. But Hopefully this should um, keep that gloss, but it will be getting polished anyway. Just the bigger parts, I'm not going to go crazy on it. I don't see the use in it. Personally, if it was my car, other than that, I would probably not polish it. I prefer an off-the-gun finish myself, and I can live with one or two bits of dust. Mainly because I hate polishing, but also, as soon as you start sanding into your clear coat, you can do your best to cut it out, but it's always still going to be there, and it's just... Um, never ending with the polishing. It's just about got to do it once a month to make them uh, look good. But yeah, awesome gun. Totally killed it, the GPI. Straight from Spray Guns Direct. These aren't in Australia yet, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it's very similar to the GTI Pro. Um, I did actually just try this then, the Pro Lite TE10 air cap actually fits on there. But what I noticed is that the, the fan was like was a lot smaller. So yeah, I wouldn't really recommend swapping and changing the caps uh, from your Pro Lights on, I mean, give it a shot. But um, yeah, for me, I'd probably just run what it's got on there and it's a conventional cap, so it's not a HVLP. It's not an air hog, you know, and you can get a nice flat finish with it with ease without having to crank it up to two bar, some stupid kind of pressure. Um, yeah, loves it. If you haven't checked out my website recently, I recommend going and having a look at it. I've been categorizing every single one of my videos for easy access for everyone. So for instance, if you wanted to go and watch this project from start to finish, You'll be able to click on that one page that has this project, every single one of the videos and blogs will be listed in numerical order and you can go and watch it from start to finish. Make sure you stay tuned for the next and final video on this Mark 1 Ford GT Cortina. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.